Welcome to the channel. This is Audi A6 2016 model. We'll see what happened to the car. Customer say engine management light on. However, I'm going to plug in my computer before start the car. Right, it's in. Now I'm going to start the car. You can see engine management light on coil light on diesel particular filter blocked however like this problem we difficult to comment without computer i'm going to check faulty code first then after that i'm going to check live data and uh, we'll see what's going on however this car be into the couple of garage before they suggested to change the DPF and the someone say need to clean the DPF I don't know how are they correct however I'm going to check with the computer first only the one thing I can say Audi A6 little bit complicated car even computer not giving much support for like a DPF problem or sometime electric parking brake renew computer not giving much support however we'll see what's going on there at the moment I'm going to do the high speed scan I can see under engine management there is a two faulty code SRS I'm not worried there is 11 faulty code for the SRS system. Do you see SRS system? Right. Under the SRS driver airbag, front airbag, front passenger airbag, 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 driver side seat belt, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm not worried about anything. I'm going to the engine management. ECM right there is a two faulty code U111300 function limitation due to receiving malfunction values and this one this is the one we have to give attention P023700 turbocharger boost sensor A circuit low input that's a one little bit tricky because of the this one it can be block DPF, it can be illuminate low plug sign, lot of things. We'll see the data because I know no point to check the live data for this car. Basically, uh, it's not giving much details. Uh, select all. No, I'm not worried about any live data for this car. I'm going to take manual reading pressure for the DPF front and back. I forget something. I'm going to ignition on and try to clear all DTC. We'll see what's happened first because I saw this car went to the other garage 39 miles ago and they reset all light however it came back after one mile that's mean I know this one not going to be work however we'll see how it's going to be work if it not we have to do the repairs and we have to reset the light Right, you saw as it is, then there, ABS, whatever, I'm worried about this one, 
you'll see I'll try to clean separate uh, read faulty codes we know the these two faulty codes try to clear from here clear DTC yeah see it's not allowed to clear anything right I'm going to leave it everything as it is ignition off and going to the engine bay because I noticed one thing this car overdue for the service thing this air filter didn't change long time I'm going to change the air filter and I'm going to do the service and after that they're talking about the boost pressure for the turbo this is the sensor basically I'm going to order the sensor here I'm going to change this sensor I'm going to do the service then after that I'm going to this is for the DPF pressure I'm going to disconnect this line and the check the pressure front of the DPF it's that line straight coming to the front here and this line oh no this is the you can see nothing there because this vehicle has a one pressure front of the exhaust it's a bit easy however I'm going to remove here check the pressure from the manometer okay we go step by step after that I'll let you know what you're going to do next step once I check the pressure right it's holding torques screw we are going to remove screw and change the boost pressure sensor for turbo disconnect the hose just twist side by side then you can remove and when you're going to change make sure by genuine parts this one got it from TPS Boxagon VW whatever Audi same part before you open the bag make sure correct sensor otherwise you can't return this one compare the new one and old one look like to me same pins inside three yes both three yeah now we can open the bag and reinstall the sensor now we already installed the sensor then I'm going to inside the car and try to reset the light with computer first before go to the air filter and oil change you'll see I already switch off the car is it work or not I don't know And you go to the code menu, read faulty code, try to clear faulty codes. Yeah, bingo. That's mean we have a good sign that sensor already faulty, that's why it's not allowed to clear. Now, however, that job done, now you can see no any. ECM right that's fine now I'm going to exit from here yes yes 
yes right okay i'm going to leave it everything as it is then i'm going to check dpf pressure with the manometer i had to disconnect this hose first disconnect from here then after i disconnect this hose and i'm going to check the dpf pressure he already removed the sensor now he is going to connect my manometer for that hose now i'm going to take a millibar yes it's millibar then i'm going to start the car you can see it's little bit high around 32 35 something that's mean partially dpf's block then i'm going to rev rpm 2500 yeah you can see over 100 millibar not bad but it's blocked basically again switch off what we're going to do we are going to inject our dpf clean chemical from here and going to clean the dpf first right now i'm going to inject chemical from here ah. <laughs> i'm going to inject the chemical <laughs> without connecting half away sleep right that should be okay i have to hold here oh. right. yeah now it's okay Right, I feeling all chemical in. Now I'm going to disconnect here. Right, see, see, nothing there now. Nothing there. I'm going to start the car first then after that i'm going to connect my meter and check the how is pressure going up or down how is the pressure going to be work right start the car idle you can see the so i'm coming now i'm going to Close here. Actually, I'm going to. I have a dummy sensor. I'm going to close that hole. Otherwise, all firm come out from there. Even I don't want to block this sensor. Then I have another spare thing, spare sensor. Then I already installed. Then I'm going to start the car and hold the rpm gradually until 2500 right yeah. i'm going to hold it like that cleaning stuff activate but however
steel vehicle at the limp mode no power I'm going to hold three four minutes like that already clear the exhaust now what I'm going to do I'm going to remove this sensor and I'm going to connect my meter you can see idle it came to until 12 it's fluctuate but it came until 12 then we'll see once I rave the rpm 2500 see it's in the correct level around 50 59 that's mean chemical done the job then I'm happy with the result so after that disconnect my meter and I'm going to install proper force and clip up and the side the screw then also I need to do the fuel also well because it's fuel level very low then you can see here still warning sign here and also there is a still DPF sign there but I don't want to say to the vehicle we install new DPF if I say install new DPF it's going to be work but however I'm going to do the fuel it's less than quarter tank I'm going to do the fuel first then after that I'm going to take to the motorway journey right I came to do the fuel first because this car has a low fuel if it the fuel not there regen process not going to be work right I done the fuel now it has a more than half a tank it's a DPF blocked however I'm going to do the road test and we'll see how it's going on I'm uh, at the moment 60 miles per hour I'm going with steady meter 60 miles per hour that's enough for do the job right I am now going fifth gear steady rpm 2000 and 60 miles per our see the miracle happen now you can see in the dashboard yeah that DPF sign disappeared then uh, yeah all fine then I'm still keep continue with the 2000 rpm and close to 60 miles per hour yeah job success okay I'm come back to you once I go to the garage again right went to the motorway journey you saw 
miracle happened dpf light and the triangle light missing now all fine and i'm going to check with the computer any faulty code related to this problem right you can see as it is no dtc that's one good sign and the dashboard clear everything okay now i'm going to switch off the car now you know if you have a like this problem what you have to do because of the turbo sensor that's why dpf block however we done the assessment we found the problem sort out all good happy customer now happy car and happy charlie thank you very much see you with the next video